Winston in Wichita, Kansas. See more better with freeprescriptionlenses.com. And tonight I'm going to cut the Essilor Ideal Advanced Invisible Bifocal with Crizal Avance for the Oakley 5040, which is the wingspan, color 03, which is the pewter in the 53 eye size. Well, there it says it there in darker. It's got the model number written on the side. The, the name and the color on the size and t on the top. All right, let me just shut up and go on. In fact, what if I don't even speak? What if I just mimed the rest of this at Larry? So, mm. <laughs> all right, no, I don't have time to mime. So, oh, let me begin by saying that, uh, yes, I am a fool. I have an internet feud going on with Larry. So, I'll let, he's going to post a comment on this video, so I'll let him des describe what he's trying to do. But I am an authorized Oakley dealer. I'm just, as a small independent optician, I'm not allowed to individually list each frame on my website with the prices. So if anyone out there wants an Oakley frame, just email me, just like Winston did. Tell me, email me the model number, the size, and the color you want. I'll get you a price. And of course, every frame comes with free single vision lenses. You got the Essilor Ideal Advanced, which is a digital freeform progressive lenses. I cannot do those for free. But So inside the case, you get your hard shell Oakley case. Inside of that, you have your Oakley carrying bag, which doubles as a cleaning cloth. It's the same material as my premium microfiber cleaning cloth that I'm going to provide. He even watched my videos and requested a yellow cleaning cloth. But this is the frame. It comes with a plastic sleeve on the left temple to protect the temples from rubbing together during shipping and I'm going to put that on there when I ship to you but this is the Oakley 5040 of course I can't see above my head to pull it away color 03 size 53 which is the pewter and again this is the wingspan this is a titanium frame don't take my word for it. it's printed on the frame very strong very lightweight very comfortable frame so this is a full metal meaning that metal goes all the way around but let me begin i'm gonna pop out the original demo lenses one of which says oakley and of course you're going to receive all the manufacturer's original packaging and i'm going to put your frame into the tracing element of my blocker but before i begin i want to program the shape into the computer you are secret agent 1374 i'm going to barcode that in there 1374 and I'm going to hit start. A little stylus is going to go around and trace the inside bevel of the right side of the frame before doing exactly the same thing on the left side. Here at freeprescriptionlenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine authentic Oakley frame and you'll receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses if you want one in a frame. If you have vision insurance or a health savings account flex dollars, you will get reimbursed for this purchase. My receipts have my federal ID tax number on them and I will give you the itemized receipt with the V codes in order to get reimbursed for your purchase. I can make them into reading glasses. I can do computer glasses, just distance, whatever you want. This one, invisible bifocal, so he, which does cost an extra $149.99. We're going to move that onto the next screen. I'm going to go ahead and take that out, set that down. Your pupillary distance is 33.5. The computer starts at 32.5. I'm going to tap the plus button twice till we get up to 33.5. It goes up in half millimeter increments. The invisible bifocal, the segment height based on your prescription in this frame is 18. I'm going to tap the plus button. It's going to go up in half millimeter increments till we get to 18. I'm going to change the layout screen. This is for single vision lenses. If I want to do a line style bifocal, I would line up the lenses that way. That is a line style bifocal. Those are my surgery glasses, but these are the invisible bifocal, so I'm going to change the layout screen for that. Now, I've gone ahead and put dots on your lenses. Every invisible bifocal comes with little laser engravings in them. It tells me the brand. This insignia is the Essilor Ideal Advanced. P stands for poly. On this side, the what is underlined, there's a little laser mark. This says 1.5. That stands for 1.50 bifocal strength. Those two dots are inside, well, one dot here and one dot there are inside the engraving. And that tells me where to lay it out over, over these two dots. And then that is the, the optical center where your pupillary distance is. I put the dot there. I come here. 
lay that out. The blue cross is the geometric center of your frame. Your eye is just above that in inset. Let me put this pen back. I don't need it over here anymore. Turn that light off so it does, the bulb doesn't burn out. Put that dot in the center. These other two dots tells me that it's oriented in there just perfectly. This is how you cut any invisible bifocal. I will be adding the Shamir Intelligence to the website soon. Oh, look at that. I hit the button too quick. Had me thinking about the Shamir lenses. I'm going to add more Verilux lenses. I'm going to, as I've had requests for them, I'm going to add some Shamir lenses. If you want any Zeiss lenses, I can get those. I'll get all the prices up there. It's going to be hard to coordinate. I cannot put a Crizal anti-glare on a Zeiss lens. I cannot put Crizal on a Shamir lens. But I can do the Shamir anti-glare coating, so it's just going to take me a while to figure out how to do all that. Now this is a block, or as I like to call them, Jenny from the block. I need to attach this to your lens while it is cutting. So I'm going to get two double-sided adhesive stickers. Put this one onto the first block. Do the same thing now for the second one. On the back is a silver button that is a magnet. It's going to do its job twice. The first time it's going to attach itself to another magnet there in the arm. I'm going to pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. I'm going to line that up there. And let me bring that over back to R because I hit the button and now it thinks it's already on the left lens, even though I pulled it away real quick. So I'm going to put that back. That black dot is the sits directly in front of your pupil. Those other two dots are on the second from the top line or second from the bottom too. But it just tells me that the lens is oriented in there perfectly. I'm going to hit that button. The arm's going to come down and place the block onto the right lens. We're going to do the same thing now for the lens that ain't right, which will be played by the left lens tonight. Pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. Line up the magnet. Where's the light? Oh, it's right here on here. It's so clear I couldn't see it. Your pupillary distance for your left eye is 34, which is a half millimeter larger so i'm going to go there or wider stay same optical center height lay everything out those dots are going to line up just where they are and i'm going to hit a button there the block's going to come down and place or well, the arm's going to come down and place the block onto the left lens now this is the edger this is what's going to do all the work while i run my mouth it costs forty thousand dollars it weighs 200 pounds i recommend everyone go out buy their own Put it on your kitchen counter then you can cut your own lenses at home you all need this guy with the two thumbs and the bad jokes to do it for you but the actual cutting wheel is this diamond crusted wheel it's going to act like a heavy grit sandpaper to grind away your lens from this size down to this size now this wheel in the center with that channel that little bevel that's what's going to put the v-shaped bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame let me go ahead and wake up. This is the last one I did, the Ray-Ban 4105 for Rue. I'm going to go ahead and change that to 1374. 1374. These are polycarbonate lenses. If they were plastic, high index plastic, Trivex, I would select that. I'm not allowed to choose glass because I don't have a glass cutting wheel. I love this one, to be determined. So some mystery material that comes out later, they'll change the software and uh, make that one available but we're going to stick with polycarb i'm not going to polish the edge of the lens because it's not going to be seen in this frame i'm not going to put a safety bevel on the front convex surface of this lens but i am going to put one on the rear concave surface of the lens the part that comes should it ever touch the face i want it to be nice and smooth so now i'm going to press that on there firmly i'm going to line up this magnet for the second time with another magnet there in the chuck or by now, you know, I like to call it the Charles because I've known this machine well enough to call it Chuck. Yeah, you saw that one coming from around the bend. Hit the green arrow, which is start. The door closes, the clamp shuts. The lens is going to be traced by two wide styluses, making sure that it's large enough to fit into the frame. And you can see as it's going around tracing the right side of the frame. And then the old carpenter saying measure twice cut once is measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing which is generally a concern with your prescription in a thin metal frame plastic frames hide edge thickness better because they are so much thicker but we'll see how it turns out in this frame in just a moment the lens will drop down on the cutting wheel the light you see flickering in the background is watered there it will act to catch the optical sawdust as it comes off the cutting wheel. 
Polycarbonate lenses cut dry, where plastic high index plastic and Tribex lenses cut wet, meaning the water sprays onto the lens for the duration of the cutting cycle. Now water will spray onto the lens for the last 20 seconds just to wash away any optical debris that you may see beginning to form on your lenses now. But your lenses are made out of polycarbonate, which is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They're virtually unbreakable. These are high impact ballistics grade lenses. The same lens materials that our soldiers wear overseas in combat zones to protect their eyes from shrapnel and flying debris. This is, it also is the same lens material that OSHA requires factory workers to wear when they're on the factory floor to protect their eyes. It also has 100% UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin. They're in Wichita, it is Wichita, right? Yeah, Wichita, Kansas. Your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin, so you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes, unlike the lotions, creams, and sprays that need to be reapplied every couple hours when you're in direct exposure to the sun. So this is something new the machine's starting to do, is that it uh, goes back up halfway and then comes back down onto the cutting wheel. I'm gonna have to get a technician out to take a look at this. Maybe there's a technician at uh, Flight Fab Aerospace Company. They got some smart people working there. Maybe they can fix the software on why the lens does that. In fact, you'll be seeing me make the uh, Essilor Ideal Advanced Invisible Bifocal with Crizal Sapphire for David's Oakley. He saw what I did to Larry there. He asked if I would put his dog George up here because his dog has always wanted to be famous and I will make the dog famous. Now if his video gets a hundred likes, his dog will get some dog treats. So don't listen to Larry. Don't like Larry's video. Instead, like uh, David's video with the Oakleys with his dog George here. His dog George, I don't need to mention, looks better than Larry. Probably more well behaved and his house trained which is more than I can say for Larry <laughs> I love a good internet feud this is like uh, Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman or uh, Jay-Z and uh, Kanye we're gonna get this feud really going so water has begun spraying onto the lens which tells me it's in the last 20 seconds of the cutting cycle it's still got a little optical debris on the edge of the lens we'll see if that gets washed off more than likely it's going to come off when it goes onto the bevel wheel. Now the bevel wheel is just a very minor miniature version of the cutting wheel. It's coming into view now. At the end of that little spinning wheel is a disc, a very fine grit sandpaper that's now going to go and smooth out the back surface of the lens. This is a routine procedure I do. Now I do that in case any portion of this lens comes in contact with the chin of chin, the cheek which I doubt it will because metal frames have nose pads to move the frame away from the face. But in case there's a hug or an impact or if anything happens, he falls on his face, there'll be no sharp edges from the lens come in contact with the cheek. Let me move that out of the way. I don't think I need that anymore. For all you left-handed people, let me put it on this side for once. See, I'm going to try and start giving you guys some new stuff you haven't seen in the videos. But I'm going to dry everything off. It's got a little optical sawdust. I'm gonna try and pull. I love it when it comes off in one piece, almost like uh, lint out of the lint trap. It's a good day when that happens. So I drop that on the counter, keep going around getting the rest of it off the lens. Once it's all off the lens and onto the counter, I collect it neatly into one pile and then I wipe it on the floor. <laughs> but I remind everyone, all the kids out there, that I went to school for years to learn how to make a mess like this. So kids, if you want to grow up and make a mess at work, you got to stay in school. So I need to do a little bit of a lefty Lucy with a Phillips head screwdriver. I don't want to lose that screw. Where is, I'll tell you what, I will use this, this box. So Winston in the future, Winston, Secret Agent 1374. If you ever need new lenses for this frame and I mail them to you, you will need a small Phillips head screwdriver. You're going to lefty loosen. Now, here's what you do. Get a uh, baking sheet, a glass pan, a metal pan, something large enough. Put it on the table, the counter in front of you. Get a t-shirt or a, or a uh, hand towel from the kitchen. 
put that in the bottom of the glass dish or the baking pan because if this screw falls out you do not want it to bounce on a hard surface and onto the floor these things are tiny and you can't see them even with the glasses that I make for you so I'm gonna do a bit of lefty loosey until the screw comes out all the way I'm keeping the frame upside down so the screw cannot fall out through the hole it can still pop out but I'm doing my best to keep it in there I'm gonna tuck the lens in at the outside well actually I'm gonna start at the nose work to the outside corner keep my thumb on there keep my finger over the screw rotate that around because I'm right-handed and then I'm going to righty tighty get that started so it doesn't come out now this is a bad habit to do because if the screwdriver slips you stab yourself in the finger every optician has calluses right here this is why I have this little piece of rubber here I'm going to put your frame down so it doesn't mar the finish of your frame against a hard surface you can do the same thing with the tish towel on the edge of the counter although chances are most counters aren't have a sharp edge but if you do something like that give that a righty tidy make sure it's closed all the way I want to do a quick inspection unlike plastic frames where the lens snaps in I want to make sure everything is in there perfectly and it is so here's another thing your lens starts off again your lenses are thin in the center thicker at the edges the further you go from the center of the lens the thicker it gets so people with high minuses prescription the these corners are the thickest parts of the lens responsible for the most thickness of the lens so by staying small like this frame Winston did a great choice on that I wasn't there to guide him through the buying purchase but he got his frame small enough he just knew that this would be a good shape for him and it is you barely have any edge thickness so starting off with a thick lens you end up with a thin lens so let's go ahead and I'm gonna put the magnet in press that on there firmly I'm going to place the magnet against the other magnet there in the chuck. That's all I call it, the Dirty Larry. <laughs> That's the new name for it now. And uh, flip that over to L, hit the start button. Just like before, the door closes, the clamp shuts. The lens is stuck in the Larry now. No more chuck. No more, it's now chuck and Larry. The lens is going to go around and be traced by, trace the shape of the left side of the frame, make sure it's large enough. And just like before, it's measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly precisely where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing, of which that turned out pretty well, if you don't mind me saying so. Of course, that's why I use the thinner, lighter weight, unbreakable, impact ballistics grade polycarbonate with 100% UVA and UVB protection, but I digress. So I'm going to go ahead and take this block off. It's no longer needed. Pull the sticker off, dry this off using my hand-approved drying method. Take the sticker, add it to my sticker collection. I'm going to come down here. Let me darken that black dot so it can be seen a little bit better. If you guys miss any of that, let me recap. <laughs> you know you're getting that bad joke in here somewhere. So I'm going to come down here to my lensometer. I'm going to spin the fine tune knob to 88. That is on 88, two tick marks away from 90. Put the power drum on minus three and a quarter. Put it in just over that black dot actually let me just spin that back and then when I come to a stop I'm at plus five and a half I'm gonna to rotate towards the minus until I see three skinny lines and we're gonna end up let me just see at where's my flashlight end up at minus three and a quarter one tick mark past three going towards four that's because you are myopic also known as nearsighted you need 13 steps of far-sighted correction with your glasses off everything is much too large so your lens is minified down to the correct size did I just Peter Brady so once it's the correct size you still have another six steps of astigmatism correction uncorrected astigmatism makes sixes and eights look alike or the letters P and F it does not make the letters X and O look alike because with that you got tic-tac-toe but so you have two curves a minus three and a quarter curve this way a minus 150 curve this way actually it could be anywhere anywhere particularly on the 88th meridian a straight line let's use this a straight line is zero to 90 to 180 we're going to turn it just shy of the 90 meridian to 88 and if this were a dart i would throw it right there between the eyes so now once it's the correct size astigmatism is the fine tune knob we're turning that fine tune knob to 88 your left eye same powers this is rather unique as rarely happens you have the same amount of far-sighted correction in the left eye same amount of astigmatism correction needed in the left eye but we're going to turn that fine two knob to 100 just past the 90th meridian to 100 so you're actually only 12 degrees apart 
Now these first two numbers are real values to be concerned with. This last number could be anywhere, as I said, from 0 to 180. It just tells us where to make everything nice and crisp. But let's go ahead. Well, the magnet, it does hold it. The magnet does hold it there. We're going to check the seven, second curvature. I'm getting three thick lines. And we're ending up at minus 475, one tick mark away from 5. That's because when you add 3 and a quarter and 150 together, you get 475. Look at that, 475. What are we going to get for your left eye? You guys have been paying attention. What's minus 3 and a quarter plus minus 50? Remember high school algebra? You add two like signs together. Now here's another teaching moment. So your distance correction is minus 3 and a quarter. The reason the bifocal is called the add, it means in addition to what's up top. So if you were to go and buy over-the-counter reading glasses, which won't work because of your astigmatism correction, well, you can, you can balance the checkbook or read a menu, but if you're going to read for more than 5 or 10 minutes at a time, your eye fatigue will set in because it's just not crisp. So you add 150 plus 150 to 3 and a quarter, 275, you're going to end up at 175 total power. So that's what you need for reading. And what else is there? The, I guess what else is there is keep working. All right, let me take the lens out, dry everything off. Get the optical sawdust off the lens, of which there is some, a lot of it right there. And of course, wipe it on the floor. Now, while I was uploading Rue's video, and now the cleaning crew came through and vacuumed up. So, see, it doesn't look nice, much nicer here now. Where's your, see, I've lost your frame. Look, there it is. So I'm going to lefty Lucy with the frame upside down and I'm actually I'm gonna well it still came out all the way I was gonna try and stop shy of that I'm gonna tuck this in keeping my finger over the screw my fat fingers trying to hold that screw in so force doesn't pop it out and once I know that the lens is in there all the way start off with a little righty tidy by the way did anyone happen to see the Carolina Duke game last night Duke, the overwhelming powerhouse, had one of their best players go down in the first 35 seconds and then choked the rest of the game. Carolina ended up winning by 20. All you Duke fans out there who are very, this is, that's the school in my hometown, I'm in Durham. All the Duke fans out there who are very unhappy with the outcome, don't worry, they'll be playing again in a couple weeks, this time in Chapel Hill. And then Duke will win in Chapel Hill by 20 points. And then a week later, the two teams will probably face off again in the ACC tournament. I don't know where that's being held this year. Greensboro, Boston, New York, Atlanta. It varies. Take the block off, dry that off. But what goes around comes around. You never know how the teams are going to match up. Who knows? Carolina will be ranked one then. Duke will be number eight. And then number eight will beat number one again, just like it happened last night. We're going to turn the fine two knob to 100. See, I've never talked about current events before in my videos. So... Um, where was that? Where was that? Oh, okay. We got to read the power. Let's find the power there. And I am getting minus three and a quarter. Minus three and a quarter. Subtract 150 from three and a quarter. And we're going to end up at minus 450. Exactly halfway between four and five. Man, I tell you, I couldn't have done a better job if I had cut, blocked, laid out, and then cut these lenses, inserted, installed these lenses myself. Now your pupillary distance for your right eye is 33.5, for your left is 34, for a total of 67.5. I'm going to turn the card around, place the PD stick against my thumb, holding on your right lens, and then we hold it up to the left lens. We're getting 67.5 millimeters, so that is cut perfectly. Let me check the optical center height of 18. From that dot to the bottom of the frame, 18 millimeters, that is cut perfectly. 18 millimeters, that is cut perfectly. I tell you, this guy is a pro. I don't need that anymore. So, when you get these in the mail, of course, this is the portion. See, I'm reaching for the tissue. I moved it down here. The reason why I did that, there's so much really fine lint that comes out of here when I pull these out, and it was getting in here. Frames were getting dusty that I would take out of my transitions unit that I decided to move it down here. I still got to find another place. I thought about mounting it on the side here. But then dust is still going to fall out, so I'm going to keep it down here for now until I find out a better thing. What I'd like to do is just cover this up so I don't have to look at that anymore. 
And actually, those two little stickers have enough on there. Will it hold? Will it hold? Ah, no, it won't. I gotta look at uh, Larry's ugly mug a little longer. So, but when you get these in the mail, there's a small chance. By the way, free shipping anywhere in the U.S. But when you get these in the mail, there's a small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight. However, there is an 80% chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other. That's because 80% of people have one ear that sits higher than the other. and that's be So because of that statistic, 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. It only takes about 30 seconds to a minute to adjust a pair of glasses perfectly, but I'm going to get these in what's known as a standard alignment, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set them on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. Now, I'm wearing the, the Oakley 8132 cross-range switch because I can pull the temple off and change the color of my temples if I had wanted to, but I'm all about some blue-orange because of my hometown baseball team, the Durham Bulls. They're blue-orange. So that's why I do that. A lot of my cleaning cloths are blue and orange. I don't have the blue anymore. Well, I do have them. I just can't pass them out because the printers made this print so small and so dark. And they put it on a dark blue cloth instead of my medium blue, royal blue cloths I used to use that you can't read the print. And I always thought that's a bad omen. And when you get a pair of glasses in the mail, you can't read my cleaning cloth. So I'm not sending any of those out. So um, I'm stuck with the orange and yellow for now until I, in fact, this weekend, my wife promised me who does all my IT work, she's going to increase the size of this font. So this gap between the two sides is going to get more narrow, but you'll be able to read on there. But I'll tell you what that says is follow me on social media. But normally when I take my glasses off, they wobble on the counter. But that's the amazing thing about these Oakley pilot temples. It's called, referred to as a pilot temple because if you can imagine a World War II fighter pilot sitting in a, a plane with a helmet on, they can slide these on and off without having to take their helmets on and off. But every pair of glasses I've ever owned wobble on the counter because I have one ear that's higher than the other. But these do not. That's the amazing thing. Let me put mine back on so I can see what I'm doing. I turn these over, flip them over. There is no wobble. I close each temple to make sure that either temple overlaps perfectly and neither temple is askew like that. I check the tension on each spring hinge. If one of them felt tighter or looser than the other, I would grab my screwdriver, flat blade this time, and either tighten or loosen depending on the, what was needed. But, uh, but that's it. It only takes about 30 seconds to a minute to adjust a pair of glasses perfectly. So Winston, when you get these in Wichita, if these are a little loose or a little tight or uneven, just stop by your local place. They'll know what to do. Now to see how your lenses minify the, my, my wording there of the website, that's what your prescription does. It makes the letters smaller when you look through there. A magnifying lens, as you would imagine, makes everything bigger. Your lenses makes things smaller. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? And people with emetropia, it's that size. For those of you cursed with emetropia, that means that you are 20-20. Myopia, you need to make lenses smaller. Hyperopia, hyperopia, you need a magnifying lens. Emotropia is a curse because I can't make a living off you. My wife wants a new pair of shoes, and people with emotropia, you know, what can I do? You're 2020, but I'll keep the light on for you. If you live long enough, everyone needs glasses eventually. So that's it. If you've liked what you've seen, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram as freeprescriptionlenses.com. That is what is written on this cloth on Twitter as free RX lenses. You can email me at uh, if there's an Oakley frame that you want that is not listed because none of them are listed. But email me, tell me the model number, the size, which is the width, the color, and I'll get your price and availability of that. Um, or better yet, you can always leave a contact me. Uh, email me directly at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. If someone else has a question, about how glasses are made or anything else. If you want to leave a comment, Larry is going to be the first one to leave a comment. He's going to be spamming me. Well, that's okay. I'm ready for him this time. I'm going to spam him right back. Spam me, spam you. <laughs> so, but, uh, but if you have a serious question or comment, leave it in the comment section below. That way other people will read it and learn from your inquisitive nature. So again, Winston in Wichita, Kansas, thank you for emailing me. 
finding out what the price and availability of is of the Oakley 5040 of course this is the color 3 the satin pewter that has a black Oakley emblem on there and of course this also goes by the name of the Oakley wingspan he got the Essilor digital uh, the Essilor ideal advance which is a a I was trying to show a way that you could see the magnification of the bottom of the lens but that's just hard to demonstrate maybe I can so the very top of the lens is going to make things smaller when I get to the bottom it's going to magnify it just a little bit more because that's what we're doing adding plus power to the bottom of a lens that's why a lot of progressive lenses go by the initials P a L it stands for a progressive additional lens it's called a progressive lens because you look downward it progressively gets stronger and stronger the same way you're in the shallow end of a pool and start walking towards the deep end as you go down the grade as you go down here this gets gets more and more plus power as we get older we need more plus power because our eyes you have six eye muscles and top and bottom superior inferior um, lateral and medius and then you have two that on the sides that when you read your eyes turn downward and inward so let's imagine this is your your eye when your eye let's look at it this way when you read and your nose is right here you look down and inward your eyes converge inward because of the two muscles placed here on the on the uh oh God, i didn't know i was going to test myself on anatomy tonight but uh, on the oblique meridian, that's the word I was looking for. Superior, inferior, lateral, median, and the oblique meridian, your eyes converge. And as we age, every muscle in our body gets weaker. That's why we can't run as fast or jump as high as, as those young guys playing basketball last night. But the six eye muscles are no different. You used to be able to zoom in on something. We all used to, as a kid, when we were 10 years old, look at our finger and see our fingerprints. As we age, it gets harder and harder to zoom inward. That's why people have a natural tendency to hold things farther away. And we're playing what I call the trombone. You're trying to find that, that focal length to make everything nice and clear. The progressive lens will do all that for you. You move your head up and down. Your eye looks through a different portion of this lens. So distance, computer in the middle, full strength of the reading of the bottom. The full strength of the bottom portion of the lens. I'm sorry if I'm rambling on is known as the working distance. It's designed that if you put your elbows touching your sides, arms bent at a right angle, as if you were threading a needle or tying a lure on a fishing string, that's the full power of the bifocal strength. Now, half of that strength is at arm's reach, which is roughly 30 inches. So if you're doing anything on the counter, cutting vegetables, cooking in a pan, that's a fingertip reach. Um, that's the, that's only plus 75 added to here so you'll have a total of 250 combined power at arm's reach you have another 1.75 minus 1.75 because you're gonna have 150 added to the three and a quarter um, for right here that's the total power you need so if you actually needed reading glasses you could get a plus 175 and again, you could do things for a while, but the eye fatigue will set in because you just don't have the extra six steps of clarity you're going to get from the astigmatism correction that has been ground into this lens. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for putting up with an even more elaborate uh, description of what uh, goes into making glasses. I'm C. More Better with FreePrescriptionLenses.com. You're going to be seeing Mo Better, and everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. I really do. You, when you get your glasses from it, you'll know you have that love and feeling. So that's it. Thanks again for watching. Let me know if I can be any more help.